a warm welcome to this Boxing Day service. It's a quiet, reflective service here at Holy Trinity as we reflect on the significance of the birth of Christ, the eternal Son of God, made flesh. We begin our worship with the words in our order of service as we prepare our hearts. We say, the people who walked in darkness, for to us a child is born. His name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, the Prince of Peace. Glory to God in the highest. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Hallelujah. We pray the collect after Christmas. Almighty God, who gave us your only Son to take a niche upon him and to be born of a pure virgin, grant that we who are born again in him and made your children by adoption and grace may daily be renewed by your Holy Spirit through our Lord Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you and the Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Before we read Psalm 148, let me just introduce it using our calendar. Psalm is a psalm of praise, and you'll see the psalm of praise to the Lord who created all things and lists the psalm lists the things that God created and it lists it in two ways. So the first half of the psalm looks at the things above and the second half of things on earth. And the conclusion is that he has raised up for his people a horn. A horn is that person of strength and who will be the praise of his faithful servants. So as we look at the remember the calendar, we have the, the picture for the Trinity, the first Sunday, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. He created all things, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Human beings, um, we fell in God's grace, we rebelled against God, we were fighting chaos and curse against the world, and we live under the penalty of sin, the threat of penalty of sin. But God promised the Old Testament and the prophet, priest, and king. And the view is in Psalm 148, we're praising that prophet, priest, and king. He was born, Jesus, because he will come to save us from our sins. So let's say Psalm 148 as a praise psalm to Jesus, the one who created all things and is this, the horn of our salvation. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him, in the of Praise him all his angels. Praise him, all his heavenly hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens. And you waters above the stars. Let them praise <laughs> the name of the Lord, for at his command they were created. And he established Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures, ocean birds, lightning and hail, snow and clouds, you mountains and all hills, wild animals and all cattle, kings of the earth and all nations, young men and women. Let them praise the name of the Lord. His splendor. He has raised up for his people a horn, the praise of all his faithful servants, of Israel, the people close to his heart. Praise the Lord. We turn to our two scripture readings. These are the set readings for the Church of England today. 
Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 to 17, and Luke chapter 2, verses 41 to 52. If you've got a standard church Bible, you'll find Colossians 3 on page 1184. First reading is instructions to Christians for how to make faith real as we relate to one another in fellowship. Colossians 3.12 Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom, and as you sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Let's spend a moment in reflection on those verses, and then we'll pray. If you want to pray um, a, a single prayer from those verses, do pray it for us as a church. Uh, I will, I'll lead the prayers, and I'll also close them, but if you want to pray, do have a little time to reflect first. Let the Spirit move your eyes on the page. Lord, we thank you that you, in your grace, you chose your people to be holy and dearly loved. Lord, let each one of us know this morning what it means to be chosen, what it means to be holy in Christ, and so dearly, dearly loved by you. Amen. Lord, we pray for us to fellowship, that our characters will be clothed with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. 
Lord, when we lack those virtues, when we lack that character, we pray for forgiveness. As you forgave us, we pray that we would love one another as you loved us. We pray we would choose to love, Lord, when our feelings are strong, feelings of dislike, feelings of irritation, feelings of wanting to distance ourselves from one another. We pray that you would bind us together with that love that you have demonstrated for us on the cross. Lord Jesus, that you would make our fellowship one which is shaped by your love and not by our feelings. Lord, let your peace rule in our hearts. We would know we are one body in Christ. Let your word dwell in us richly. Let all your word from Genesis to Revelation dwell in us richly. We ask this, Jesus, for your honour and your glory, giving thanks to God the Father through you. Amen. Let's turn to Luke chapter 3. Two, sorry. <clears throat> Luke chapter 2, the account of Jesus at the temple. Verse 41. Every year his parents went to Jerusalem for the feast of the Passover. When he was 12 years old, they went up to the feast, according to the custom. And after the feast was over, while his parents were returning home, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. But they were unaware of it. Thinking he was in their company, they traveled on for a day. Then they began looking for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they went back to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him in the temple courts, sitting amongst the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. Everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished, and his mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us this like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. Why were you searching for me, he asked. Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he was saying to them. Then they went, he went down to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. But his mother treasured up all these things in her heart. And Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. As human beings, um, we like to create order. We like to have things in, in, in routines and, and everything just so. And when we're like that and things are, are structured, uh, we find that we're content, peace at peace, and things are, are, are happening as we hope they would. Um, but then when things are chaotic or go astray or awry, um, it causes anxiety. And here's Mary and Joseph traveling back to Nazareth from Jerusalem, and they think everything's in order, and so they're at peace, and then they find Jesus is missing, and can't quite imagine what that would be like. He was 12 years old, and they had to travel back a whole day to Jerusalem, not, not knowing what they would find when they get there. And they say, verse 48, your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. There'll be times in our lives where everything that we thought was ordered just gets thrown into chaos. It could be through our body getting sick. When our bodies are healthy and ordered, it just feels like things are normal and then we can't control what happens to our bodies. Or when there's grief breaks in, 
someone dies unexpectedly, a redundancy from work, work, work just closes down, we don't know what's going to happen next. All kinds of things can, can switch us from the comfort of routine to the chaos of, uh, or, the, or the, the anxiety of chaos. What do we need to know? We need to know verse 49, that Jesus has to be in his Father's house. He was at the temple on that day. Uh, after his death and resurrection, he returns to his Father's side. And that's it. That's all he gives us. Do you not know I had to be in my father's house? At the end of um, our journey, more than a day, the journey of our life, Jesus is in his father's house. The destination is there for us. And so um, whether we're in a place where everything's comfortable and organized or in a place of chaos and anxiety, uh, we have a goal to work towards uh, Jesus' Father's house. Jesus, we thank you that you had to be in your Father's house. You have to be in your Father's house, and nothing can stop that. We pray in our own lives where, like Mary and Joseph, we assume things are routine and everything's in order. We pray that when those moments of anxiety and chaos come, that you would help us keep our hearts and minds focused on that day where we will be with you in your Father's house, where there are many rooms. If it were not so, you would have told us that you've gone there to prepare a place for us and will come back to take us to be with you. Help us, Lord, to be like Mary, to treasure these things in our hearts. In your name we pray. Amen. We continue in intercession. Let's pray. God of all grace and mercy, we praise you for Jesus and we thank you for the celebrations of yesterday as we considered your incarnation, how you came from heaven to earth to be our saviour from our sins and to secure a place with you in glory. Lord, we pray for people throughout the world who celebrated yesterday. Lord, for those who are born again into your kingdom, we pray that their hearts would continue to praise you today with the heavens above and with all that is below on the earth. We pray that Psalm 148 would be our reality as your people, filled with praise for you. We pray for those who celebrated yesterday without you, that they praised, celebrated us a festival based on Santa or a festival based on feasting and celebrations and parties and shopping or whether they've been Scrooge-like and withdrawn from all the festivities or whether they've been unable to, to celebrate because of sickness or isolation. Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit would move through the nations of this world, as he has been doing since that first day of Pentecost, to bring hearts to know you, Lord, to demonstrate your love through Jesus and to bring people into your kingdom. May your church continue, Lord, to proclaim the gospel, the good news of Jesus, calling all people everywhere to repent and to believe. We pray, Lord Jesus, that your church would continue not only to survive, but to thrive and grow as it has been doing wherever the gospel is preached. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Well, we thank you for our Queen Elizabeth, 
uh, Lord, for her boldness each year in speaking of her faith in you. We pray as she wakes up this morning, having celebrated her first Christmas without her dear husband, Philip, after all these years, that you would be with her, you would comfort her, and you would assure her that you have gone to your father's house to prepare a place for her. We pray the words that she spoke yesterday would have touched the lives of not only believers but unbelievers around the world and that there be those who come to know you, Jesus, because of her witness and her faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I always pray for those who wake up this morning in West Bromwich who have hangovers or tidying up to do or distractions. Lord, that something would move hearts to you. We pray, Lord Jesus, that this church, Holy Trinity, and every other church in this town would continue to faithfully trust you, reaching out to neighbours, doing what is good in your sight, Lord, loving one another as you first loved us. We pray that, Lord, the churches in this town would be well known as places of praise, places of fellowship, and place, places where good deeds are done to the glory of your name. Amen. Lord, we just name those we know who are sick at this time in our hearts, asking you to have mercy upon them, to relieve them from unnecessary suffering, and to draw them, Lord, into your presence. Lord, may each one who is sick keep their eyes fixed on you, and may we who are anyone who is well provide um, comfort and relief in physical ways. We already pray too for those who mourn. We ask that your Holy Spirit, the Comforter, would bring them true and lasting peace and assurance of your love for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let's pray together the Lord's Prayer, as Jesus taught us. We pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Turn now to your communion order of service. As we've been doing, I'll bring the bread and wine to you. drink together, as instructed by the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 11. So then, my brothers and sisters, when you gather to eat, you shall all eat together. We begin by reminding ourselves of God's law, under which we are commanded by him to live. God spoke these words and said, I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods but me. Do not worship idols or created things. Do not take my name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Honour your father and mother. Lord, have mercy upon us and give us the desire to keep these laws. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. 
you shall not lie, you shall not covet. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write all these your laws in our hearts. And so we examine our hearts before we receive communion. Dearly beloved in the Lord, as we come to the Holy Communion of the Body and Blood of our Saviour Christ, remember that the Apostle Paul exhorts everyone to examine themselves, not eating and drinking as if we are entitled or deserving. If we eat and drink with a truly humble, contrite and broken heart, with living faith in Christ, then he will live in us and we in him. But we will be in great danger if we receive communion unworthily, eating and drinking to our own damnation and kindling God's wrath against us. Judge yourselves, dearly beloved, so that you are not judged by the Lord. Repent truly for your past sins. Let faith in Christ be alive and firm. Change your lives and live in perfect love with all people. Give heartfelt thanks to God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, for his salvation and redemption of the world by the death and passion of Christ. He has given us this meal as a great comfort to, our, to us, reminding us of what he won for us on the cross, forgiveness and mercy, and by which he calls us to live holy, righteous, and peaceful lives to the glory of his name. You then who truly and earnestly repent of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbours, and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God and walking from this day forward in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God. God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all people, we acknowledge and lament our many sins and the wickedness we have committed time after time by thought, word and deed against your divine majesty. We have provoked your righteous anger and your indignation against us. We earnestly repent and are deeply sorry for these our wrongdoings. The memory of them weighs us down. The burden of them is too great for us to bear. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that from this time forward we may always serve and please you in newness of life to the honour and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to everyone who with heartfelt repentance and true faith turns to him, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Word of God is given to us not only to challenge us where we have fallen short of his standards in the law that we've just confessed, but also to comfort us because he is the comforter. Jesus says to everyone who turns to him, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. The Apostle Paul says, Here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance, 
Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. The Apostle John also says, If anybody does sin, we have one who speaks to the Father in our defence, Jesus Christ the Righteous One. He turns away the wrath of the Lord by his sacrifice for our sins. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, it is our duty and joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God. And therefore with angels and archangels and with the whole company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy God, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. And so we pray, we do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your abundant and great mercies. We are not even worthy to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord who delights in showing mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat this bread and drink this wine, that our bodies and souls may be cleansed by Christ's body and blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. We especially praise you because in your tender mercy you sent him, the baby in the manger, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He made there by his once and for all offering of himself a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. He instituted and commanded us to continue an ongoing memory of his precious death until he comes again. Who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood, the blood of the cup. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. So, as those who have expressed our belief in the God who made all things through his Son, Jesus Christ, to those who heard his law and confessed that we've broken it, those who have heard the comforting words and know that this meal is um, for us to show that God is the God of mercy and grace, who calls us to live holy lives in Christ. We can participate together. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for you, take the bread, preserve your body and soul to eternal life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. take the cup. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for you, preserve your body and soul to eternal life. Drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for you, and be thankful. Almighty and ever-living God, we pray together. Almighty and ever-living God, 
We thank you for reassuring us at this communion of your favor and goodness towards us, that we are truly members of your, the body of your Son, and that we are also heirs through hope of your eternal kingdom. We humbly ask you, Heavenly Father, to keep us as faithful members of your Church and to strengthen us by your Spirit, so that we may fulfill those good works which you have prepared for us to do. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, brothers and sisters, we come to the end of our um, Boxing Day Communion. I pray you will go from here strengthened in your faith and assured of God's love for you, even as sinners, but committed to serving Him. Next Sunday, um, you will see the notices. The service is 11 o'clock as usual, but in place of a sermon, um, please prepare, be willing to bring your favourite verse from this last year and share what has been favourite, how God has spoken to you. I want to keep the passages quite short and the testimonies quite short so that um, we can have um, as many people as are able to share. Um, we do still have some books and tracks left to, um, for explaining Christmas to our friends and relatives. Do take them if you um, have someone in mind you give them to. Um, they can always be used next year. And then be praying about our soul course, which starts on the 19th of, well, the date's not there, is it? 19th of January, it's a Wednesday, there'll be a two o'clock soul course and a 7.30, and there'll be, um, uh, there'll be eight sessions with me who Jesus is from Mark's Gospel. And so be praying for someone that uh, you'd like to invite, and asking God to give the opportunity to share that message of Jesus with them and pray that uh, we'll get many people to come along. Uh, there are those here this morning um, for whom the soul course was a really key part of coming to know Jesus and you can ask them about it if you like. Um, I won't name them. Just will ask the time right here. Let me finish with a blessing. Asking God to bless us and um, Hebrews chapter 13, the final blessing of the letter. I should say before I finish that I'll be taking a week of rest this week. Um, I'm quite tired after long term, but God will sustain us all. I hope you have a good um, rest if you are able to rest this week before term starts again in the new year. And so, um, Hebrews... May the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will, and may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen.